The back plate has um, a, a O-ring, which is obvious. Make sure that that's centered. Um, it also has a spring-loaded uh, pressure plate back here, so make sure that that's loose when you put it back together. Um, both sets of Allen screws on the back of the pump are two and a half millimeter. There's four around the outside that are deep in. And you can see the uh, Swiss Army knife style does go to the bottom and touch it, just barely. And this is after taking off the center plate, which has four obvious Allen screws. The three drag stages have a mark on the outside, and that cutout is aligned with the exit port. Here's the reassembly in process, so each of the, the uh, stator blades goes in like that, and then the ring goes over the top of that, and repeat. slide in very easily. Hit each stage and then the next ring to hold it in place. Be sure to use clean gloves through all of this, especially for the going back and forth between external and internal parts. To, uh, to get the nut off of the rotor, you can see I reassembled it with the, the, uh, the rotor uh, in there and the bearing on the, on the back. Um, grab hold of the drag stages um, gently but firmly with one hand. Be very careful not to bend the, the tips of, the, of the, the turbo stages. And uh, so grabbing the drag stages with a glove, you can turn with a wrench, and it's just snug. It, uh, it's, it takes a bit of force, so you'll have to grab firmly up there, um, but uh, not, not ridiculous. So here's how to take apart a Varian uh, or Agilent TB81M turbo pump. This is the pump in disassembled form. You can see all of the various blades on the, on the rotor and then the drag stages at the bottom. Um, the, uh, you can see all of the sets of, of rings that came off all of the stator blades in order from, from top to bottom. Um, they look like the first eight are identical and then, uh, and then four stages at the bottom. Um, the, so these all come, the top ones come off just by splitting apart and then lift off the ring, split the next two apart, lift off the ring, and so on. Down toward the bottom, the last three have O-rings or rubber bands around them. Um, it wasn't clear if these actually are sealing around the outside edges or, uh, or if they're just rubber bands. Um, to get the rotor out, the rotor um, itself out, you need to take the three things off. So here's the, uh, the nut. This was on the, the outside. Let's put these in order. The nut is on the, was on the outside, then a bearing, and then the electrical rotor in, that was inside that. These all are stiff, but they come off gently with pliers. So a, a nice pair of, of angle, um, angle beetle nose is able to reach in and grab just the outer edge of the, uh, of the rotor and pull it out gently, Be, being careful not to scratch anything on the way out. Uh, once you get it out, then put the nut back on the end of this axle. So put the uh, then put the nut back on the end of this. Turn the pump back upright and push down on push down on set it, the nut on top of something that you can push on, and you can push the uh, push the axle pop the axle free from the the body of the pump. So then this is now free from everything else. Once that's free, of course, be extremely careful not to bend those rotors. And then the remaining bearing is available up on top by, uh, by pulling out the, the three set screws, on, uh, or the, the three Allen screws on top, and then pull the, pull the, the bearing out the top. 
Um, this particular pump, we were trying to figure out how to get to the to underneath this hole, which is the bearing purge port. Um, it's custom to this particular pump. Uh, doesn't look like we can get to it because the the windings are are epoxied in place. It looks like, and there doesn't seem to be any way to press them back out to uh, to get to that port. Um, essentially the port got stripped out, the threads are stripped, and we need to find out if any of those threads got into moving parts with the bearing and so on back here. Since we can't get to it, um, it looks like the best that we'll be able to do is just try to blow that out with compressed nitrogen and, uh, and hope we get all the, all the pieces out that, uh, that could get into those bearings. The bearings themselves are, themselves are sealed. So that probably is not going to be uh, as much of an issue. It looks like they're, they'd be more susceptible to gas, um, corrosive gas getting in there than they would be to, uh, to large particles. For comparison, here is the size of the, uh, in fact it's difficult to even see on the video, here's the size of one of the pieces that came out right at the end of the screwdriver. And there's another one, this little coil of thread that got stripped out of the hole up there. So those are what came out of the out of the, the purge port. Um, so uh, it looks like our best bet here is probably vac seal or uh, um, or a similar vacuum sealing epoxy to seal a new a new fitting into that hole, so that we can uh, continue to use the purge port. Um, failing that, we'll have to just seal it over with a with a, a piece of metal and uh, and vac seal and bake it and uh, bake it gently. To, uh, to drive off the, the solvents from the, the vac seal. Taking off the cover plate, you can see there's the, the top of the, the bear, bearing closest to the, uh, the pump stage, and a little, um, you can see that this is a, 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 a pressure plate bearing, roller bearing on top. The actual bearing underneath. Um, you can see a couple of wires here, presumably a thermocouple measuring the, the bearing temperature, and, uh, and that's where they, there's a cutoff cutout on that side of the, the rollers to, uh, to help protect that. Um, I had taken, the, thinking I'd be able to press the, the, uh, the windings out. I loosened this. There are no screws or anything underneath this. The wiring port. Um, the, it looks like all each of the wires is attached. Can't tell if they're soldered or pressed on underneath that. And, uh, but there's nothing, nothing underneath that that's necessary to disassemble the pump. Um, there was a set screw inside the, the vacuum purge port. Um, a little, uh, a little set screw in the back there. That does not seem to have done anything. It goes into. The, the inner wall here. Uh, it looks like there's a pressed metal ring that perhaps holds the rotor in or the stator in place, uh, but I was not able to press that out even after removing the set screw. The set screw does go deeper than this machine surface back there. Um, you can see the machine surface is is continuous with the, uh, the that's the output port. Um, so the set screw goes through that back wall to something, but I couldn't tell what it went into. The bearing that's closest to the rotor presses out easily from the inside, so I just reached in with a little screwdriver, gently pushed, and that presses right out, so that's not an uh, issue. The, uh, the bearing itself says snap cage on it, and there are a couple of other insignias, but I can't... Uh, but removing that bearing does not open up any any further access to the uh, to the stator, so there's no uh, there's no more access to the stator. This is all single block machine piece up here, um, so there's no uh, no way to get to that uh, that bearing purge port from the top either.